Hey guys, welcome to another Server Miner plugin tutorial. I'm your host LTGym007 and today we'll look at the Multiworld plugin. This is a really fantastic plugin which allows you to create, delete and customize worlds in Minecraft. It makes it super easy and I'm going to show you how to do it today. So to start with we're going to go over the main commands. If we do forward slash world that's going to bring them up. And then let's start by creating a brand new world by doing forward slash world create, calling it something, so server miner. And then we want to choose either the type of world, such as nether, normal, flat, etc. If you have a generator plugin, you can use that and type that in. If not, you can put in a seed. So on this website here, there's some pretty cool Minecraft seeds that we're going to look at. And I'm just going to grab one at random. So I'm going to copy and paste this and then bring it over here, hit enter, and that's going to start the world creation. Now it's going to take maybe 20-30 seconds, so I'm going to cut back once it has finished. So now that it's been created successfully, we can do forward slash world teleport and then the new world name. And then it's going to load the terrain and we will be teleported into our brand new world. Now I'm going to teleport to the coordinates on the seed website and see what it looks like. And here we go, this is a pretty cool snowy seed that we found and looks like the picture that we saw. And that's just what you can do to find some really cool places for your players. Now if you do forward slash world list, that's going to list all the worlds you've created. As you saw, I made some additional ones. Then we can do forward slash world delete and then whichever world we don't want anymore, that's pretty handy. And then a really cool feature is the forward slash world flag followed by the world name. You can change things like the game mode, the difficulty, whether you have PvP on or off. So simply select your flag and then either enable or disable it by putting true or false. So then if we do forward slash world whitelist followed by the world name and enable, that is going to allow only certain people to jump into the world. And then what you can do is add a particular player to the list and that will allow only them and anyone else on it to be here. And then you can do the list command, see who is allowed and who is not. And then obviously you can repeat the command just with disable on the end to get rid of it. Another useful command is the clone command. So you can do forward slash world clone, the world you want to clone, and then the new world name. Now the next feature is really handy. If we do forward slash world backup and then test for example, that is going to back it up just in case someone griefs it. And then you can do forward slash world back and that will take you to the previous world that you were in. Now if you change anything in the config file you can do forward slash world reload. And then if you don't want people going in the world anymore you can do forward slash world unload and the world name. Now the last thing I'm going to do is create a brand new nether world. And what we're going to do now is link two worlds that allow the portals to connect. So if we do forward slash world link and we're going to link the normal world test to test 2 which is a nether world. And you can see what this does is link portals. So if you create a portal in one, it's going to take you to the other rather than some random world or messing up like that. So that's how it works in game. Let's head over to the config file and see what we can do in there. So here we are on the SMPitnik control panel. And as you can see, there's a couple YML files. If we jump into the config, there's not too much in here. You've got the prefix and if you don't have permission and then a couple of things to do with settings. So this is really the only thing you want to customize. So you can auto load certain worlds over here if you want to. And then if you scroll down, we have the defaults when you create a brand new world. So you can customize that if you want. And then the rest of the config is simply everything that you're going to see in chat. Now, if we jump into the world.yml, this is going to list all the different worlds that we have. So world, world nether, test, server miner, and you can see who created it, when it was created, and then all the other bits of information about it, such as the game mode. Then we have the backup folder. So this is where we save that backup of test, just in case someone griefs it, or you need to go back. And here we are on the Spigot page. You can see it's updated from 1.16 to 1.20. Scroll down, make sure you have this additional plugin, Facilis Common. If you don't have that plugin, it's not going to work properly. And then here are the commands and the permissions as well. But if you need a server to host it on checkout serveminer.com for the best and cheapest hosting around. But that's it for me. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you next time.